Hey guys, what is going on? Chris here as always with Shughead Gaming. Here are 10 reasons why Firewall Zero Hour for the PSVR is better than Rainbow Six Siege. Number one, blind fire. Easily one of the best tactics to use in Firewall Zero Hour when pinned down behind something or hiding around a corner under fire is the ability to take your aim controller, free arm it away from your body and squeeze off a few rounds or 30 into oncoming combatants from the safety of cover. It may not be the most accurate or tactical approach, but it's damn fun and has gotten me out of more than a few tight spots and worked brilliantly for laying down suppression fire. In Rainbow Six, with the gun permanently glued to your chest, this maneuver is completely impossible and instead you are forced to peek your head out along with your gun and open yourself up to headshots. Number two, peeking. And speaking of peeking your head out, that brings me to my next point, and that is Firewall's ability to allow the player to actually look up, around, and through holes to sneak a peek at advancing forces or simply get a less risky lay of the land. This is such a simple and fundamental tactic used in actual combat that gamers simply haven't really been able to do until the advent of VR shooters, and Firewall Zero Hour takes full advantage of this to remarkable results, giving players a true sense of realism, strategy, and immersion. Number three, better maps. This next point will likely be a divisive point, but one I believe to be true. Rainbow Six since launch has almost doubled its map count, but when it first launched, it hit the ground running with a similar amount of maps as Firewall Zero Hour. Sure, Rainbow Six Siege had a few fantastic maps, with the plane and house maps being a few standouts, but instead of just a few great maps, Firewall Zero Hour absolutely nails its map designs and brings to the table nine incredible maps. Firewall's maps all manage to have something to make each special, memorable, and fun. With a development team that has previously worked on such famous shooter franchises as COD, Battlefield, and Halo, the Firewall Zero Hour team is no stranger to making map design, and it shows. Each map feels unique from the others and brings with it so many areas to create amazing moments. Not since the original Rainbow Six Vegas and its famous Calypso Casino map have I enjoyed a tactical shooter map design to this degree. Number four, gun stability. Something very minor that many may have even missed is the advantages the wonderful hit detection and firewall zero hour can provide. Have a gun that has higher than normal stability issues? When covering a stairway or courtyard, try propping your gun on a nearby ledge to cut down on recoil and nail those headshots. Simple, yet effective. This is yet another VR advantage that is simply absent from Rainbow Six and most other shooters for that matter. Number five, independent head movement. Something I touched on prior, but here I'm talking specifically about the ability to look, walk, and aim all independently of each other. Walking down a hallway or street but need to take a quick look into an adjacent hallway? How about when you need to keep your sights aimed on a possible choke point but need to look over to ascertain your team's positions? In Rainbow Six, you would be required to completely move your head, gun, and body away from the task at hand to do something as simple as get your bearings. Here, in Firewall, this is easy, intuitive, immersive, and straight up more realistic. Number 6, Custom Loadouts. One of the most irritating aspects of Rainbow Six Siege is its incredibly rigid loadouts locked to operators. In an attempt to keep game balance, Rainbow Six Siege has taken away one of the most fun things to do in a shooter, and that is work on the perfect loadout. Want to rock an AK-47 and grenades? Nope. Instead, your only choice might be an AK-47 and a flashbang grenade, locked into a female body type. This rigidity on operator gender and loadouts can really hurt a shooter, where customization and experimentation is not only part of the fun, but part of your in-game identity. This is especially unacceptable when in the solo or co-op terrorist hunt mode, where team balance is no longer an issue. With 7 customizable loadouts that can be applied to one of any 12 operators, this simply isn't an issue in Firewall Zero Hour. Furthermore, operators aren't just reskinned clones of each other and instead actually have unique attributes outside of their loadouts. Some may have a resistance to explosive damage while others may reload faster. The fact is, it's up to you what you want to look like and how you want to gear up to approach the match at hand. Choice is king and Firewall Zero Hour absolutely nails it. Number 7, Proximity Chat. An absent and requested feature that you can see all over the Rainbow Six forums is that of Proximity Chat. Fortunately, Firewall Zero Hour includes this, and while not only being more realistic by requiring teams to stay together to properly communicate, it is also fundamental in non-intrusive team gaming. Need to give directions to a single teammate you are partnered up with? 
Easily communicate between the two of you without confusion from the rest of your squad, wondering if you're talking to them or simply talking over top of them. Yep. Additionally, when a player dies, they are placed in an oversight position on the map surveillance system. Nice. From here, proximity chat yep. is disabled and players in oversight can easily communicate to all team members with ease. Finally, proximity chat is limited to only your current team, with the opposing team hearing nothing. This was a wise decision as it eliminates shit-talking, player harassment, and keeps the matches positive. Number 8. No Drones In my opinion, tactical games should make tactical information on the other team a rare and sought-after commodity. Unfortunately, in Rainbow Six Siege, they did away with this, and instead you have matches where driving and jumping drones are in every room, giving away much of your team's positions and defense strategy. Thankfully, Firewall Zero Hour mostly does away with this. Instead, it makes permadeath the only way to gain intel from the in-map security system. Sometimes this does make dead teammates more valuable than alive, but it's a far cry from the social media alternative in Rainbow Six Siege. Number 9. More Realistic Aiming The age-old argument of what is superior, keyboard and mouse or console controllers. Firewall Zero Hour takes a defiant shit on both and instead gives us the aim controller. The brilliant aspect of the aim controller is that it removes any advantage of twitch shooting, quick wrist movements, or nimble thumbs, and instead requires gamers to actually aim in real life, with real muscle movements in order to hit what they want on screen. Eye-hand coordination in its truest sense comes into play here, and begins to separate those who are good gamers from those that have learned proper gun control. Gamers new to VR will quickly realize how handheld they've been in every first-person shooter they have ever played, when all of a sudden their on-screen gun doesn't stay up on screen unless they actually raise their arms. This gives all new meaning to being in battle-ready position, as keeping your gun up and ready is mandatory to ensure the quickest movement up to your eyes and pulling the trigger. Furthermore, your physical head must actually track your gun movement when looking through the sights. Whether across an open courtyard or looking straight up, covering a steep staircase, this sense of realism must be played to appreciate, and makes traditional shooting, like you find in Rainbow Six Siege, stale and antiquated in comparison. Number 10. Immersion I think we all play games to experience things we can't do or easily do in real life. Many of us want to escape into these digital worlds and become immersed in the game. While sitting lazily on a couch may be the easiest way to game, it certainly isn't what I would call immersive. A quick look around or a peek in your peripherals and you know you're in your living room, bedroom or office, i.e. the real world. What VR and Firewall Zero Hour more specifically offers is the ability to completely immerse yourself in this tactical team-based game world. Looking at your teammate and actually seeing a six-foot soldier looking right back at you is surreal to say the least. Guns in your hands feel like life-sized weapons and can be turned around and closely examined, making skins and other customizations all the more meaningful. Maps are no longer just fictitious settings designed on a programmer's computer, but are instead real, tactile places. This immersion elevates everything you do in Firewall, offering what feels like real-world meaning and tension to firefights. Hiding behind cover while bullets fly overhead and charging into a fortified room with your squad is a sensation in VR that must be experienced to believed, and a trip shooter fans should not miss out on. Thanks for stopping by for my 10 reasons that Firewall Zero Hour is better than Rainbow Six Siege. Please leave your comment below, let me know why you think I'm right, why you think I'm wrong, and if you have any additional points of why Firewall Zero Hour is better than Rainbow Six Siege, please leave them below and maybe I'll do a part 2. As always guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you want to see more PSVR content from me, please consider subscribing, and for updates, hit that bell icon.